Okay, we're in Linux now. CentOS 7.8. What I've got running is, it's not really an apples to apples comparison, but it's a bit of a demonstration of the Phi uh, versus the 20 cores of the uh, 2680 version 2 CPUs. We have a look at the, uh, the CPU usage. I don't know whether you can, I just hope, I hope this is focusing in adequately so you can just about see what's going on. Getting about 85%, 83% on each core, so much better than uh, the Embry um, renderer in Windows, but using the Osprey renderer in this case, so like I said, it's not apples to apples. Osprey renderer is probably a little bit better, but it's, it's path tracing and it's running on the on the CPUs. Just to let me check the uh, yeah. So it's slightly different, slightly different software. I was just looking at the different uh, pixel filter options on the. But on the right, we've got the the Xeon Phi running. And we're getting about 26, 27 frames per second on the Xeon Phi. And on Osprey we're getting about 12 frames per second. So we can move the images about and you can see the you can see the noise. But slightly different renders. Moving it about again, Osprey's running about 12 frames per second. And 23, 24 on the Xeon Phi in preview mode, so gives you an idea of the performance. But the interesting thing is, we've got the CPUs, you know, running nearly flat out here. But the Phi, it doesn't use the CPUs at all, so it's just running on its own. You can see the the Xeon Phi software here giving us the temperature reading. 62, 61, 62, 200 watts power usage at the moment, so pretty good utilisation of all the cores, 100% core utilisation there, so it's working well in that regard. We have a look at the settings, and we've got everything. We've got the turbo turned on here, so I'll just flick the turbo off and... Uh, should see that total power usage drop a bit. So if I just take the turbo off, and the card will restart, but it will still keep running the program. So just give it a minute to settle in. Yeah, we've seen it drop down there, so it's dropped down to 178 watts when we turn turbo off from 200. So. 22 watt drop which does indicate that the turbo it is pushing those cores harder and we can see the performance it's dropped from dropped to 25 frames per second from nearly 27 so we're definitely getting that uh, that turbo effect on all cores I'll just turn it back on so we can get the best performance from the Phi just restart the card again I'll just close that. Just one thing I forgot to mention about the Phi um, when I was doing my introduction is that it does have four threads per CPU per per core in the in the Phi. So, but that the hard it's hardware um, threading. So it's four hardware threads. So they're not. It's not hyper-threading, it's, uh, it's somewhat different, hyper-threading is a somewhat more advanced um, way of sort of feeding the, making sure that the pipelines in the CPU are full all the time. Now, hardware threading is a more sort of cure, crude way, and we've got four threads, so on a 60-core processor, that's 240 threads. It sounds impressive, but each core can still only execute two instructions at once. So the four uh, threads being fed into each core are just to keep everything full. Just the, the card works best when it's got a, 
until you know it's got a stream of um, of data running through the through the CPU. So it's all about keeping the pipelines full with uh, with no sort of stall. So that's the idea behind the um, the four threads per per core. And to get the best performance out of the out of the processor, you are best running. You know when you, you know when you're designing your software, it's best running about uh, you know, huns, you know, at least about 120 threads, so at least um, two threads per core to get the best out of it, or more. So I'd, I'd forgotten to mention that. Okay, I'm just going to get the crown demo up and running, and we'll have a look at that. See how the Xeon Phi does there.